Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is junction blocks, these ones right here, and I'll explain what all the different colors and stuff mean and uh, basically how the block works and a few different uses for it. But to first get started, uh, what is a junction block? It's basically just a block that you can use to split your cables with. So you have your cables like that and you can connect it to any direction of the uh, particular cable like this and it will automatically set up the output for that side. So south is facing this way and as you can see our cables on this side here so it's automatically detected that there is a cable if we remove the cable then test again then it's basically assigning no sides for basically outputting so if we add it back again it's going to set up the well input because we didn't prop place it the proper way so input and now it's output so and then we can connect any side that we want and it will automatically set up the output so north is that way and uh, as you can see north is set up now alright so now that we know that uh, when the devices are connected to it it has dynamic output it also has a second set of variables actually used for the um, block itself and I'll get into a little bit on how this all works now any wire can go on any side now these little input output things are just to reference to what would be for the second variable, not so much for the wire itself. So you can connect any particular cable to any side. It's just the little icon for the output input is actually the side that if you were to place, say, this like that, then you have your outputs on these sides. Your power is going to be coming in this way and going to be pushing out this way and up as well as to the north here. So we could do a series like this and it will pull in energy from this side. So this corner, bottom corner, that side, and then it'll push it out that way. We can also rotate these blocks so we can change the orientation of the direction that we want the input output cables to be facing. This allows us to basically set up more dynamic systems and grids for our energy. Now, this could be used for a number of uses, obviously. Uh, one example would be to store energy. You could set up a battery system or you could have multiple si grid systems for basically putting a uh, getting power maybe. So what you could do is kind of just place it like this and you could use the input for the side on this side to basically get the um, the power from up above to where you need it to go. So for example, if we were to grab these solar panels here and place it on top, we can get the input from the power from the solar panels. These ones will be fully charged now. And that should go into these cables here, which we could use the output on this side to direct the power this direction. And we should have power in this cable now. So as you can see, that's basically how it works. Uh, we're just connecting the grid to any direction that we want. We could also off do the direction in other direction. For example, say this is a input, we could actually change the direction and have it go out this way because that will work as well. And as you can see, this one's filling up with power now. So that's basically how the junction block works. It just allows you to direct power and connect devices and stuff like that up to it. Now, you could technically even put more solar panels up here and because it's technically a device this will go into this grid here so if we were to place down a couple outputs like that and then hook up a solar panel these are already going to be charged because these are classified as devices which are the same as wires so let's go into M Creator and I'll show you basically how to set up this uh, pretty simple block. It's not too complicated. There's only like three procedures 
and one element. So we'll cover that. Oh, and one global variable as well. So let's hop into M Creator and I'll show you how it works. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a couple resources. You're going to need a input and output texture for your actual junction block. So these are the two textures I have for those. If you want a particle texture, you're going to need another one for that uh, if you're going to do a custom particle. Now another thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a global variable. I have just set this variable to energy junction output switch. Now it's a number variable and it's set to global map and the default value is zero. Um, you can basically name it any particular name that you want, but uh, it just needs to be for the junctions that you're gonna basically switch between. Now, to get started, we actually need to take a look at that script for the variable itself. So let's open this one up right here. I've set a on world tick update for a global variable. And then what I've done is I've basically increased the global variable. So we can set the global variable here. And then what I've done is gone to math and then got a math operator, left it on the plus icon. And then what I've done is I've basically gone to math again, grabbed a number, placed that here. And then I've gone back to variables and gotten the global variable. And then what this will do is it will increase the variable by one every tick, world tick. So this will basically increase every time the map updates. Now after that, what it's gonna do is it's going to test if the value is for the global variable is equal to or greater than six. If that's true, then it's going to reset the variable back to zero and then it's gonna start the process all over again. So it'll be going from one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So that's basically all this is doing. It's basically like a timer, but it loops between one and, well, zero and six, but zero is never used because this is being run first. So it's always one, two, three, four, five, six, and then resets to one. All right, so now we got that part out of the way. Uh, let's go into the block itself and we'll take a look at the properties so let's go to the cable junction now to actually set up the system itself you're going to need your actual inputs for your um, junction blocks to be these ones right here your front right and bottom your output slots for your junction need to be left top and back. So these are basically just for connecting to other junctions. Any block can basically connect to any of these sides, but these are just to indicate the junction for junction to connection to junction connection. So any junctions that want to connect to the other one need these sides to be properly set up. I've also set a particle texture down here and you need to enable rotation for down, up, north, south, west, and east. And it's just a solid block. You can make a custom model if you want to, but it's just easier to go with a solid block. And give it a GUI name, and you might want to set the same properties as your cables. So it would make sense to have it as your same properties as your cables. If you haven't watched the cable tutorial, I would go back and check that out. And it's a good starting tutorial for some of this more advanced stuff as well. All right, so after we've done that, we have basically not specified any tool or anything like that. All these properties are the same as the cables. Uh, we have set the tick rate to one and it the block on color to map is set to gray. We also have flammability set to 30, same as wool. And we have enabled the entity tile uh, tile entity for this block. So we're basically enabling that. We're setting the inventory size to zero and then we're disabling these two blocks or, or check boxes right here. And then we aren't using any forge energy for this particular thing because we're making our own system. And then we have two procedures or two triggers. What we're doing is one block added. This again, it covers our 
uh, variables for our input and output based on the rotation. And then over here, what we're doing is we're basically getting the uh, sending the power for our output input and all that other particular stuff. So we'll cover that in just a second. That's a more complicated one. This is the one that we're going to be covering in just a second. So generation, obviously we're not generating it because it's not a natural block. So we're not going to be doing that. So let's go back to one block added and we'll cover the one block added procedure. So let's just quickly edit this and I uh, will cover what's going on here. So let's minimize this part right here and we will cover exactly what's going on. So the first thing that we're doing is we're running it on server side and then we're going to set our energy capacity to the full energy capacity that we want to send it to. We're going to send the set the energy send limit so how much we can actually send per uh, per tick and then the default stored energy that we basically are adding to the block. So in most cases you want this set to zero, especially for cables. If you're creating something that require or that you want to basically add power, then you want to have it uh, between zero and 50 for or your energy capacity. So that's basically that. And then what we're doing is we're just basically setting all the plug sides to um, put the block. Uh, now this is your default plug size to be exact. It's not your ones for your junctions. There's actually a whole different series of that for your junctions. Now energy plug north, these are all set to your to none. So it's not going to have any connection to or default connection to uh, other devices. So we're basically not assigning the default um, plug connections for our northeast, south, and west sides. However, down here, as you can see, there is a different type of variable that we're assigning. And this is called basically the same thing, but it has a J at the end for junction. And what this does is it basically assigns the block a second tier of these variables but for a junction version. Now this is important because we're going to assign every side a specific value. Now north, which would be this setup right here, what we want is to assign this and then we're going to offset our variables. So every direction is going to have a different set of variables for our input and output slots just for our junctions because we, we don't want to basically tell it to um, use specific variables for the actual devices. Now we want this to be dynamic, so we have to use a different variable to basically set our junctions to have specific sides. So this is basically what this junction variable does here. Um, again, I've just used it for J for junction. It doesn't have to be anything really long, but I figured just abbreviating it would be better for that particular thing. So that's basically all this is doing is just setting a second set of variables for keeping track of what sides for the junctions that we can basically connect to. All right, so now that we got that all covered, let's go over to our update tick and I'll cover how this part works. There is two main sections to this particular procedure. There is this section right here, which covers the automatic um, placing of... So, uh, sorry, I had to relearn the code a little bit. So basically what this section right here, these six different sides basically cover the dynamic code for creating the junctions. So when you connect a cable or a device or whatever, this is the code responsible for basically automatically detecting what direction the input and output sides need to be. So for example, what we're hap what's happening right here is the first section is this is um, this would be north. So what we're doing is we're basically testing if it's any block that is a forge variable, forge energy blocks under that particular tag. 
And then what we're doing is we're basically testing if the energy facing south, which is the basically the direction north, uh, the north block that's facing has the face facing south. We're testing if it has an input or an output, depending on which part right here. And then what we're doing is we're basically um, testing if the junction side is either an input or output. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to set the um, particular variable for north to be an output. So if it's an input, then it's gonna be an output to auto automatically connect to it. Only if it's none though. And if it's over on this section right here, what we're doing is basically the exact same thing, but this time we're basically testing if it's an output. And if it is an output, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set the, um, set the thing to an input. Something doesn't seem right here. Never mind. Uh, it's completely fine. There, I just missed that there, there's two of these things. So we have our input section right here. And then what we're doing is if it's neither one of these, what we're doing is creating an else statement. And then what we're doing is we're going to just set that particular variable, if it's not none, to none. And that's basically all it's doing for the dynamic script up here. And we do that for all six sides. So this is east and it goes east, north, east, south, west, up, I think. And yeah, that's up. And then the one below it is down. So that basically covers the dynamic script for connecting to devices and stuff like that. Now there's a second part right down here, which is the power transferring script, which covers our global variable, which we're getting the energy junction output switch. And then we're testing if it's a, between a variable of one, two, three, four, five, or six. And we're going to basically toggle what direction of power we're going to be sending evenly between each one of those sides. So we're starting with north, east, south, west, up, and then down. And then we're going to be sending power only to that one side for that one particular tick. And then it's going to move to the next one, next one, next one, next one, and next one. And then it's going to go back to the top, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then it's just going to keep doing that. So basically in these sections right here, as I said in the cable tutorial. Once you learn this particular script, you are going to be using it quite a bit. Uh, this is the script for basically transferring power for the actual blocks for passing the variable energy. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because I did cover it in the cable, the actual cable wire tutorial. If you want to go watch that tutorial again, I'll link to it in the description. But basically what this section does is it's going to test for a bunch of conditions. The only difference is we're also testing if the junction right here is, uh, the, the tag is also for an input for the junction block. So we have our regular junction south and then we're also testing if our junction south or our regular variable self, and then we're testing for our, our plug junction self. So we both are testing for the both inputs. Uh, that's pretty much the only difference in this entire script from that tutorial. And we're making sure that we're running it on its own um, local variable. So we have a whole bunch of different variables over here. This is obviously north. We have east below that, and as you can see, we're using the local variable for east, and we're just going to be basically breaking this up into uh, getting the direction. We're then going to test for the capacity and how much storage. We're going to then test if there's a limit. And then finally, what we're doing is we're basically sending the power if based if there is equal to or greater than the energy capacity and then if there is then we're going to send only the amount that we need if not then we're going to basically send just basically all the uh, available energy to that particular block so that's basically all this is doing right here again 
watch the cable tutorial. I covered it in depth in that particular one, um, in that one of the sections. One last thing that I want to cover before we end today's video is the junction block also needs to be added to the variable energy blocks forge uh, list. So basically, if we scroll all the way to the end here, as you can see, the um, cable junction has been added to this list here. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you.